folks, this is Erin and welcome to my channel, The Only Girl in the Room. Listen, I am just like you getting used to this new normal while we are out here dealing with coronavirus, or excuse me, while coronavirus is out there dealing with whoever, because I'm inside, I don't know about you. That being said, in this new normal, we are having to establish a whole new set of processes, guidelines, all of it, and especially in tech, like we have to rethink everything at this point. And those who are ahead of the game early are gonna be the ones that actually benefit, right? So I wanna make sure that you are one of those people. I don't care how old you are, there's always an opportunity to get some knowledge and like put you ahead of the game. That being said, let's talk about the new normal. What, what are we relying on right now? We're relying on internet, we're relying on PCs, MacBooks, phones in order to do business. In that foundation of building, building something new, I had to build a whole new office set for myself just so I could work from home, right? Needed a desk needed the whole shebang. In order to build a new normal, we got to set a foundation. And it's no different for you if you're trying to get into tech. Like we got to set the set the ground, right? Ground level. Like what, what's the view going to look like? Very important. Okay, in the cash toolbox today, we are talking about five steps to program, product, and project management. Right. When we talk about foundations in project, program, or product management, I think what is important to remember is two things you need. That's soft skills and hard work. There are five simple steps that you really need to follow if you're going to be within the program or product management space. The first thing I think you need to do is identify which of these are the best for you. To break these down, project management really is a focus around one single project. You may work with multiple teams, so it may be sales, it may be marketing, it may be HR, all working on this project, but you have one single goal and that is to get the project done. What do I mean by that? Within the world of IT, you may be setting up or implementing a system or creating a brand new application and you need to talk to both business teams and IT to understand how how that's going to work. A project manager is going to focus on all of those things. Whereas in product management, the perspective changes a little bit. You may still be working on sales and marketing. However, within product management, your focus is the product. It's not the collective system. You're working on one single focus within that system. An example of that may be Gmail. That was once a product within Google that was developed and then turned into so much more. So when we think of product management, you're really going to look at the entire product life cycle and what it is to bring that product to life. In the world of program management, things are a little bit different. A program manager may have five different projects within a program or on a larger scale, a program manager may have five different programs that they're managing. Let me give you an example of that. Once upon a time, I was running the cybersecurity program and had five different programs in five different regions. All right, let's talk about skill sets. When we look at project, product, or program management, all of these skill sets, I really do believe, relate to all three. And they're going to be critical that you have them. I think number one is communication. Are you the type of person that can convince someone to do anything where people automatically kind of lean into you and listen to you. That will be a good skill set to have within program or project management. Are you good at helping people to see the larger picture? Uh, the way I like to tend to look at that is can you help people to expand their mind to look at an idea differently? That really helps within program management. And then planning and organization. Organization is so critical. You need to have good attention to detail. Are you helpful in that you can read in between between the lines when someone is telling you something they may not be communicating it in a way that it's not really what they want but you're able to actively listen and understand the details within the things that they're not saying so what tends to happen is you'll have business people who say they want something but in reality when you start working with technical teams they actually want something different and so it's up to you as a program or product or project manager to be able to see in between the lines and understand that I like to say it's like herding cats it's turning chaos into organized chaos. And then lastly, your technical ability is so important. The reason being, you're not really expected to be the expert in everything. It's almost impossible to do that. But you do need to be able to have conversations with people who are technical. Because again, you may be the go-between between the business departments as well as the technical departments 
and you do need to be able to speak both of their languages. So make sure that you're up on infrastructure and security. And then when we look at these skill sets, they are going to be different depending on the industry that you're in. If you're working for the federal government or the nonprofit sector or even for a startup, these skill sets will start to vary. So I do recommend once you've decided which one is probably best for you, start to do your research on what skills you will need to work within those sectors. All right, my favorite value. I think you've heard me mention before within tech, you can definitely get paid. And within these spaces, um, they vary because again, project managers, they're looking at a sole focus. The job is equally as important, but here in the state of California, the salary range may be a little different compared to program manager because your responsibilities start to expand. Program managers tend to look at large programs and they manage various projects within them. So that's why they get paid more. And even here again at, in the state of California, 172, I actually think is just the average. You can make more money than that with experience and based on your education. Also, do be mindful that dependent on your city and state, this will change. The tech sector in California, sky is the limit with the money that you can make, but the numbers won't be the same if you're looking at the state of Texas, for instance. You can look at websites like salary.com to do your research. You can also go to CNN Money and do their relocation calculator so that you're able to see what the various salaries would be in your city and state. All right, when we look at these three careers within program, product, or project management, if you're already in the workplace and you don't want to go back to school, listen, four-year college degree is not even necessary to do these jobs, but you do need to be up on a number of things. I like YouTube for listening in on personal experiences. You will find former Google or Facebook recruiters who talk about what they look for when they're hiring program managers. This is where a YouTube is a good space to find those personal experiences. And then also online course platforms. My personal favorite is Udemy, but there's also LinkedIn Learning and Coursera, which is academic based on uh, college courses. These are places that you can go to get the education if you don't want to go back to school or if you don't have the money to go to a four-year college. Udemy will offer courses that are range anywhere from $10 on up, and I really like them because they offer a plethora of courses ranging from security, even on down to resumes, everything's out there. And then lastly, industry recognized certifications. If you don't wanna go the four year college route or you don't wanna go back to school, certifications may be a good way to get into any of, any of these three careers. What I will advise is make sure you do your research because depending on the industry, there may be a leading certification that you need to have. Also, certifications can be pricey and they can require time. Uh, there are certifications that are two day classes, but cost you anywhere from a thousand to two thousand bucks or there are really good certifications that only cost you five hundred dollars to take the test but you do need to have experience in order to take the test so I will say look at the requirements and understand what is necessary for you in order to get the certification before you pay the money to do it because again you may need to have experience prior and then experience the most important thing so you may be saying well how am I supposed to get experience if I'm new to this this career. I'll tell you, there are a number of ways to do this. The first one is networking. Look at professional organizations and see if they're offering any mixers or any type of events or meetups. My favorite is Product Hive here in Los Angeles, and they're around the world actually. Product Hive hosts events where they bring in product managers from Slack or Headspace to talk about the certain things that they are working on and collective ideas. So this is a good way to network with product managers who are already in the field and to ask questions. Also, it may be an opportunity for you to volunteer. Look at nonprofit organizations who could use your work. This is a great resume builder. In addition to that, once you've gotten your skills set up because you've taken those online platform courses, you can start to do freelance work. This is great in order to get your feet wet before you take on, per se, a big corporation or a startup where the competition is going to be heavy. And then lastly, look for mentors and advocates. The two are different. There's a video coming out soon. Look into that. I talk about mentors and advocates. If you can find a mentor, maybe out on LinkedIn or just within your personal relationships, these are people who will willingly take you under their wing, show you the ropes, but advocates will be there to make references for you and even help you get a job. So 
best way to break this down for you is think of people who know how to pivot, think of people who know how to perform, and then also think of people who know how to produce, right? Let's just keep it in the family of P's, okay? Oh, also think of people, period. <laughs> So let's go with these four P's of pivot, perform, produce, and people. Do you like people? Listen, people are cool and everything. Like, you know, I can get along with them, but like, do you love working around people? Because in program management, you have to work with so many different personalities. That goes that P again, right? You have to work with so many different people, know how to talk to people, as well as like know how to communicate and know how to listen. Like those are really good skills to have. So in dealing with people, you'll, you'll be effective as as well as successful if you love people. Secondly, when we talk about pivoting, are you a person that can make quick decisions? So like if you, you know, if you play basketball and you like quick with it, <laughs> You have to be able to like turn on a dime when decisions get made. Sometimes from someone higher than you. If you're in school, that's that's a teacher, right? Or a professor. Or if you're in a job, that's a manager or a director. Someone in authority is probably gonna make a decision and like based on whatever that decision is, you have to be able to like turn the ship or at least help turn it, right? With a whole bunch of other people and make that work. That also makes you successful if you know how to pivot. So then also there is performance. Do you know how to perform? Like, at the drop of a dime, can you regurgitate something knowledgeable or helpful to someone? That's what I mean in terms of performance. Someone who knows how to be on just like that. Like, can you on a drop of a dime pivot, but then also be able to perform? I am now having to perform, why? Because I want you involved in the game of tech. And in order to do that, I need to be able to, next, produce. Just like I'm producing this video for you, you need to be able to produce, you need to be able to like give people budgets on what something's gonna look like. Or you need to be able to give a, a schedule. Do you like being on time? If you like deadlines, if you happen to like seeing things in terms of a blueprint, oh my God, program management is for you. A program manager is someone who essentially is an architect and we're talking about building here, right? What, are, what do architects do? They build. As a program manager, you're gonna set up a blueprint in order to build a program that is inclusive of like a bunch of different mini little projects. Build, build, build. What are the four P's that we need to remember when we talk about program management? People, what else? Pivot, important to be able to turn the ship. Perform, you need to be able to get it in really quickly, right? And then also produce. Can you produce deadlines? Can you produce budgets? Can you produce a schedule if needed? Why? Because you're having to herd cats. It's literally like herding cats. Having to make everything fit into a tight ship, be able to turn that ship, but then also be able to like talk about build. So another quick thing about building. You have to have an important foundation in order to do that. In order to be a part of this tech game, you need a strong foundation. And I think this is where we connect the culture to the community, to the curriculum, right? It's important that you have a structure of people around to keep you focused so that you continue to build. What does that mean? Having a tight space, like a tight knit group of like-minded people, that's number one. An important like-minded group of people who are gonna keep you on the same ship, on you know, keep it, keeping, the, keeping with the tide, right? And making sure that you become that architect, that you're, you know, you're building a, a, a skill set if you don't already have it, as well as building the foundation and building the community so that you can keep it together. Just keep it together because I promise you, before long, you get there and you get there really quickly too. Ask me how I know doing this work. Anyway, you don't need to go to a four-year university to become a program manager. You just, listen, you simply don't. To, to certify you, let's look into a certification. If you have the time and you have the money, and you know, money-wise, like certifications come in different spectrums, there's different certifications that you can get. I mean, if I can do it, so can you. And also, look into if you already have a job and they have some type of training benefit to you, look into 
getting that certification paid for because it is a matter of training that you can make applicable to the job that you're already doing. So that's another route to go. All right, so let's say you're not working and you're in school or you know, you're know you you're still trying to figure out like what you wanna do in life and you're like, I don't know, that might work. Like I'm good with people. Well then, okay, let's talk about it. If you're already in college, look into business courses that facilitate things around project management. I think even today there are some schools that probably already have curriculums that are geared towards program management. Program management is big in tech right now. It's like completely taken off within the world of tech. There's not, listen, there's not a tech company out there that you're not gonna find a program manager or what we call a technical program manager or technical program management. You're gonna find those jobs out there and they're available and they all pay well. All of them pay well. <laughs> So, and then also, let's see, let's say you're like in junior high or high school and you're like, how does that apply to me, sis? Like, how does that really apply to me? Let's break this down. So, who are already having to go to certain classes, right? And you have to figure out like what your class schedule is, like when you gonna study for homework. I hope you're doing homework, girl. <laughs> And like, when am I gonna fit time in for like that Instagram video that I was gonna make or that TikTok or whatever, right? You're already starting to like work the brain in terms of scheduling your life. You gotta get up in the morning, you gotta get to school at a certain time, blah, blah, blah. You are already doing this. You already have that skill set. How can we start to turn that into a tech career and get you paid as soon as you get out of as soon as you get out of school? Ask me about it. Again, uh, if you have any questions, drop them in the comment section. I promise I will answer as many as I can. Also, send me an email. Listen, I am so happy to answer whatever questions you guys have re related to tech and some of the careers that we talk about here because why? I'm tired of being the only girl in the room. Like, legit tired. Tired. <laughs> I want to see your pretty face in the place as soon as possible, okay? So, my name again is Erin. This is the only girl in the room and I will see you guys soon. Bye.